What's up, my brothers from another mother? This is a uh, requested topic I got from a few guys over the last few months on uh, the military, and uh, they wanted my opinion on what I think of joining the military, whether or not it's a good idea, especially for a young guy. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm really, really torn on this topic. Um, when I was a small boy, I used to love everything military. I built the, um, the scale models of all the World War II planes. You know, the Messerschmitts, the 109s, the 110s, the Spitfires, the Hurricanes, all that stuff. Loved it. And growing up, um, I watched the Falkland War unfold on my TV set in my living room with my family, with my dad especially, because he served in the Royal Air Force. And the, the Harrier jump jet was like the star of the show. Um, shortly after that, Top Gun came out, and at that point I was in my late teens and I knew I'm flying fighter jets. That's what I want to do when I grow up. I'm, I'm blowing shit up. I want to go Mach 2 and do all kinds of cool stuff. Only um, that dream was quashed when I applied and I found out for you to fit in the cockpit of a Harrier, you got to be under 5'8". I'm, I'm just over 6'2". So that was never going to happen for me. So, you know, I went on to plan, I guess, B and C and, you know, everything unfolded in my life from there. But um, I would not recommend joining the military. I'm going to, you know, apply caveat to that for most guys. And I'll tell you why. Um, I've done probably two or three dozen coaching calls with guys that have served in the military um, over decades. And for the most part, a lot of these guys, um, while they look back fondly on the ability to travel and see the world and uh, serve and you know defend the freedoms of the West as they're sold the bill of sale when they join it, and the friends that they make, of course, uh, the camaraderie, you know, the brotherhood is, um, I find with guys uh, like no other. So there are a lot of benefits to it, but for the most part, a lot of guys really look back on the time in the military and they feel like they were sold a lie. Um, the impression that I've gotten is that um, for the most part, they were told um, these are bad guys over here living in caves and they're trying to take away uh, the freedoms of the West, the, you know, the civil liberties and the freedoms. And there's a threat to all that. So we need to go over there and do something about it you know, hoorah. So they go out and they're, they're super positive about it. And they find after a decade or two, after they've served enough time, um, that at the end of the day, that for the most part, the enemy's not over there hiding in a cave. It's actually back home and it's a domestic one. Um, and it's the deterioration of the fabric of society. Um, we already know that guys don't get treated well when it comes to divorce. In fact, family law is real hostile. One of the things that, that's popped up over and over again for guys that have had kids is uh, the domestic system here systematically uses their service overseas to defend several liberties and freedoms and all that stuff against them once they come back over here. I'll give you a good example. Um, there was this guy who did three tours of Afghanistan and when he came back, he had issues with his, um, you know, the, the child of his mother. I guess she was his wife at the time. And uh, she basically told him, I'm going to lie. I'm going to tell them that you're abusive, that your PTSD is causing problems in the marriage, that, you're, that, that, that she's scared. And, you know, blah, 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 insert all the stuff, um, you know, because he was shooting for 50-50 custody. And lo and behold, she filed a, f a false domestic uh, violence charge. Uh, he spent time in jail for it. He spent a ton of money fighting to get that cleaned up. Uh, they stripped him of his uh, title and his service in the military. I guess it was something like a dishonorable discharge. Um, and to top it all off, uh, after all of that was settled and he got 50-50 custody and went through all the treatment that they forced him to go through, which he didn't need, uh, the Ontario government then uh, went on a petition to take away his firearms from him. I mean, this is a guy that, that, that grew up, you know, hunting with his dad. Um, you know, the government then decided, well, you know, I think this guy's a threat to society because of everything that's happened. And apparently, you know, his wife claimed domestic violence and there's all these allegations, even though they're cleared up and dismissed. Then the government goes after him to take away his, you know, his hunting uh, collection. After this guy serves for the country to protect it from the bad guys living in the caves. So from the perspective of um, what's going on in the military today, I don't think I can recommend it for most guys. I will say this, though. Um, if if you have a, a dream as a young guy to 
get into very expensive hardware, like, you know, 40, $50 million jets and zoom around the sky and, you know, you can qualify and you got good eyesight and you can fit in it and, you know, pass all the physical, I'd still say do it. I mean, if you have that childhood push for it, um, I've watched guys like uh, Jocko Wilnick in interviews and he's talked about how he always wanted to be like a special service GI Joe sort of thing. And that's why he got into doing what he was doing. And, uh, you know, he still looks back fondly on it, but for the most part, I think a lot of guys are really, really disappointed with their experience, um, versus what they've been told. So they're, so they're over promised something and then they're under delivered on the back end. Um, and while they go through it, they make great friendships. Uh, some of them last, you know, a lifetime, some of them don't at all. And they lose great friends in combat. Um, if you're going out there doing grunt work and potentially going to be used as fodder for the state, I would, I would strongly recommend passing on doing anything with the military. Uh, again, you know, you got a big dream. You want to be captain of a boat, captain of a fighter command squadron. I get it. Um, I, you know, if I could go back in a time machine and I was shorter and I had uh, perfect vision, I would, I would have still done it. I, I would have been, I would have done everything that I possibly could have, um, to have flown those fighter jets. If I'm being honest, um, it, 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 it kind of, it kind of busts me up a little bit knowing that I was never able to do that, which is weird. But at the end of the day, guys, um, you know, mental point of origin, take care of yourself, understand that in today's world, um, it's a very, very different place than what it was from your dad's time, from your granddad's time and all that. Um, one of the comments that, uh, stuck with me over one of the coaching sessions was a guy that said to me, he goes, you know, um, cause it was close to remembrance day. And he said something along the lines of, you know, we pretend to care about our veterans and those that fight for the freedoms of the West, um, you know, for one day of the year, but for 364 days of the year, you're talking about veterans day, remembrance day, whatever you want to call it, wherever you are in the world, but for 364 days of the year, they don't give a shit about you and they treat you like crap and you're a disposable commodity to them in their toolbox. So you know, with that being said, I know there's a lot of guys that are like, oh, hang on a sec, Rich, if you didn't have a father growing up and you need discipline and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You know, maybe you're going to find some exceptions to this rule, but I think on a balance of probabilities, um, your time is probably far better served doing something else for yourself, mental point of origin. I've do talk to guys in every branch of the military, Navy, Air Force, Army, doesn't matter what it is, even intelligence. And they're all saying the same thing to me. It's, it's, it's not what they thought it would be. Um, there's a lot of feminist indoctrination. A female primary social order is heavily infused into the way that the military now works. Um, I've seen a lot of guys have uh, a lot of difficulties working in uh, posts, especially if there's we, uh, women that are assigned to them, they just, there's all kinds of problems with them trying to get their jobs done and conflict. And of course, um, you know, they make special rules and exceptions for it all. So I think, you know, for the most part, you should probably talk to, a, to as many people as you possibly can before you make this uh, choice. Uh, because it's for a lot of guys, it ends up being a career. It's not just doing a tour or doing a couple of assignments or anything like that. For a lot of guys, it ends up being a career and they find, you know, I've done it for 25 years and I can't leave now. You know, I've got X number of years before I can retire and, you know, they're doing this, that and the other thing to me and that sucks and it's total bullshit. And, you know, I lost custody of my kids and I found out my wife was banging Jody when I was away and insert all of the reasons that things go sideways. But, um, I struggle with this one. I really do. You know, there's one part of me that was like, yeah, go fly those jets and blow shit up and follow your dreams and live that passion. There's another part of me that's like, wow, after talking to all of these guys, um, I just can't recommend it. So go and do your own research, fellas. I want to hear uh, comments below on this one because I think this is an, a very interesting topic. So s smash the like button, comment below, uh, pin in the top comment. If you need anything uh, to reach out to me as far as coaching, you want to request a video, join my men's community. It's all there. See you guys in the next video. Peace out.